Right. Good morning, everybody. It's 11 a.m., so it's time to get this show on the world. What's the world on the world? Show on the road. Um, so as usual, I'm going to run through the sort of more interesting bits of the week's news. Now, obviously, as you can imagine, it's a short week and we are in the sort of depths of August. Um, so it's been a little bit quiet, but there's actually a few interesting things that I sort of want to talk about. And then I'm going to bring on James Harris of Troy Asset Management, who's going to talk to us about STS Global Income and Growth. Um, but first of all, before that, I just want to have a quick look at what's going on in the renewable stroke infrastructure sectors. Um, now, sort of key thing here is that obviously with the fundraising window currently closed, the funds have been trading at a discount in a sort of environment of higher interest rates. Um, there's sort of recently been a trend of funds of funds selling down assets. Um, so first of all, trying to sort of validate their NAVs and hopefully sort of close those discounts. Um, they're sort of using that to reduce gearing, obviously given a backdrop of higher interest rates, um, fund buy buybacks once again um, to sort of help with the discount and to fund new investments because a lot of these are also NAV accretive. And the sort of reason that this has kind of popped up is that in the depths of August, um, or it's just achieved a sale. So what it has done it is sold its, and I can't even begin to pronounce that, pronounce that, but it sold an onshore wind farm in Sweden for sort of about 74 million euros. There's a couple of interesting things here. So over the life of the investment, it's achieved an internal rate of return of 11.3%. Um, but the sort of sale price is a 1.4 million premium to the sort of prevailing valuation they have prior to the sale. Now, sort of 0.8 million of that was included in the end June NAV. And there's going to be an additional sort of 0.6 million reflected in the 3rd of September NAV. Um, and as, as I said, is kind of the trend. The proceeds are predominantly going to be used to repay down the short-term debt facility. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring the gearing down for about 46% at the end of June to about 43%. Um, and so you can see with sort of funds doing this, the margin, the whole sort of dynamics of the thing is changing. But where people have sort of worried about the validity of those NAVs, and I'll sort of come on to this in a bit, once again, these guys have achieved a premium to what was sort of in the NAV. And you're sort of very much seeing that. Um, as I said, other funds are doing sort of similar things. And I just pulled out four trans or relatively recent transactions here, just to sort of give you some idea of what's going on here. So JLN Environmental Assets sold 51% of its AD portfolio. That's a sort of anadyra, ana, anaerobic digestion portfolio. This is the sort of biogas stuff to 3i infrastructure. And that was in August. But once again, the valuation for that was in line with what it had in its nav at the end of June. Um, Bluefield Solar towards the end of July, announced it moved on to sort of phase two of its strategic partnership with the sort of group of pension funds, the GLI infrastructure. Um, once again, this validated the valuations in the NAV. If you remember rightly, they got a sort of small premium there and they got 70 million out of it, which they used to reduce leverage. And actually the next stage that they're going to be moving on to will be to actually use some sort of proceeds to move on and actually develop some more assets. Um, in conjunction with these guys, because once again, that's NAV accretive. Um, prior to that, just pulled out Next Energy Solar, that sold its White Cross wind, or sorry, White Cross solar plant. Competitive sales process, once again, that added 0.57 pence to its NAV because they obviously sold it a premium to it, which they used um, sort of proceeds of to reduce that. And they also launched a 20 million buyback program as well, once again, to kind of sort of weigh or hopefully. You know, reduce the discount. Um, slightly different to all of those with GCP infrastructure. Obviously, this is very much focused on the debt side. Um, but that was able to achieve, I think it was back in April, sale of some sort of loan notes in relation to the Black Creek Wind Farm. Got 6.4% premium to NAV, once again, used to sort of pay down debt. And I just think the sort of key thing to take away from here is where people have been worrying about the NAVs, the sort of kind of sales we're seeing are either, you know, in line with or a premium to. So actually, there's clearly sort of decent value there. And if you look at who's buying these things, you can certainly argue that private markets are once again putting a bit more of a premium on these things than listed markets are at the moment. Um, next thing I just wanted to talk about, because this came out kind of this morning and yesterday, was um, Artemis Alpha and Schroeder's Capital Global Innovation. They have both got a holding in a sort of private company called Reaction Engines, which does clever things for basic aerospace engines. Um, now, Artemis is sort of announcing this morning, they've written their holding down by 75%. 
and that follows a sort of 25 percent write down in april it's not a sort of huge fund um so yeah this is not really great news um position was 6.4 million end of april now 1.2 million there's a good chance a lot of this could come right but what they're basically saying is there's sort of been significant progress in commercializing technology um, but recent revenue growth has been slower than anticipated. And really, this has forced the company to go out and get more money. So they are pursuing an internally led fundraise, which is likely to be at a discount to the last valuation. Now, Inov basically said all of the above, but they also said that, you know, to get this into cash positive, it's going to require further investment. Obviously, they're raising money, um, but it's actually appointed advisor. So it's getting out there and doing this. Um Inov's position was 10.6 million at the end of December, and that's now 1.4 million. So, you know, they say the sort of overall cost of now is about 4.8%. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about was PRS REIT, uh, sort of fresh out. Today, it's had a requisition request um, from a good group of investors. Uh, some sort of usual names you might expect. They're sort of Harwood Capital, Waverton, CCLA, Order. Um, perhaps the sort of surprise there was CG Asset Management. What they want to do is they want to get rid of the chairman's David, or sorry, Stephen Smith, and get rid of another of the non-exec directors, David Francis. And they want to appoint Rob Naylor as chairman, and they want to bring in Christopher Mills of Harwood Capital as a director. Um, now, collectively, this sort of group of investors owns, they say, 17.3% of PRSR's sort of capital. Um, Harwood, obviously, which... Chris Mills Leeds owns about 1.1%. Um, they also say that they've been told that sort of rougher and asset value investors who've collected got 1.6% have said they're going to vote in favour of these rev resolutions. So you've got circa 20% already saying they're going to do that, but clearly there's sort of a long way to go. Um, PRS says that it's taking advice as to the validity of the request. I mean, at face value, it looks valid. You know, it clearly clears the threat or clears the threshold. Um what I thought was perhaps just worth noting here is that Naylor and Mills both joined sort of Hypnosis Song Funds board when really they needed to clear out there. And these guys came in and sort of, I think, Naylor in particular drove as chairman um, a lot of the sorting out, obviously the sale of the portfolio to Blackstone, et cetera. Um, and I think they, you know, given that was quite a mess, they did a sort of pretty, pretty decent job of that. Um, I think perhaps what was a little bit sticky was that they were sort of both paid an extra 250,000 along with all the other directions i should say to compensate them for their increased workload to complete the sale now um i think neither of them on the board was sort of very very long at that point and there was certainly a strong argument that um they knew what they were getting involved to or involved with when they joined the board anyway so i think that sort of left a little bit of a bit of taste in the market's mouth so we have to see what happens this i mean with song that was a much bigger fund it could absorb something like that you know whether prs could i don't know but that's a you know, perhaps something for shareholders to think about right that's all that i wanted to talk about obviously we've got some disclaimers here um obviously please do take a moment to read those um if you can't at the moment then obviously you know, perhaps pop back a bit later 